Good morning and welcome to today's Beginning the Day with God. It is Friday the 27th of September and we've opened this little act of worship with Keith Dukes, You Lord are in this place. We awake. To the ripening of the grain. We awaken. To the rising of the bread. We awaken. To the abundance of the earth. For your name, O God, is fullness of life, without measure, flowing over, more than enough for all. As your spirit pulses through creation, we celebrate our dependence on the earth and the generosity of your being. Let this day be one of gathering and giving. Amen. This is the time of the promised gifts, of seeds sown, of crops cut, of sunflowers turning to the light. In your grace, let us know what love is coming to birth within us and within our world, and help us to welcome it. Amen. As we continue our theme of contemplation, our reading today comes from the book of Genesis, chapter 28. Then Jacob woke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place. And he took the stone that he had put under his head and set it up for a pillar. Thanks be to God. Now we come to this morning's reflection. People have always had an instinctive understanding that certain places are special, sacred even, and these places have long been named and marked by stones or trails or stories. They may be places of encounter, places of rescue, places of rest, places of beauty. Some places are special only for individuals, such as the tree root by a little bend in a stream in mid Wales, where I sat with my feet in the water and prayed during a particularly difficult time. Others, such as Holy Island or the Callanish Stones on the Isle of Lewis, have a sacred life far beyond those original encounters. These are often called thin places, places where heaven and earth seem closer together. John Ng, in his book A Christian Theology of Place, argues that these thin places become so because of divine disclosure that has happened there in the Christian past as opposed to any intrinsic holiness. As an individual, or a community encounter God in a particular place, like Jacob in Bethel, or Columba and his companions on Iona, that becomes a sacred place for them. Then others come to that place with an expectation of encountering God, and so they are more open to that encounter, and so that becomes known as a thin place. This means that the boundary between heaven and earth never far as we might think. Any place can be a sacred place if only we allow ourselves to encounter God there. So, where are your sacred places and how will you allow yourself to encounter God today? Our reflection was written as always by Richard Clarkson. Amen. A song of the dawn. Our steps have crossed the darkness, and now we see your light on the quiet earth. Under the leafless trees, we glimpse the coming growth. You take our small faith, our human weakness, and multiply our joy and confidence. For the word of life is born in our world, a word to break the power of oppression. A word that stops the march of war, 
A word that speaks from the child's heart. It is a word that will never be silenced, a joy that will be made complete. For we are your children, and the word is born within us. And now, as our Saviour has taught us, so we pray. Our Father, Father who, who art, art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. A blessing on our gathering, the harvest of love seeds. A blessing on our giving, born of fearless strength. A blessing on the first fruits, the taste of heaven's plenty. A blessing on the opening road, the energy to start anew. This blessing we ask of her the seed of creation, the bread of life, the spirit of the wild. Amen. Amen.